for three days now, I've had next to no fish coming up to the window or going in the sky pond. Jags come up say hello. I'm not going to be using this full time now because it's just, it is a pain in the backside. I'm taking it back to a moving bed and no longer a static bed. Is that I'm going to put it back to moving. Right, so let's kick this video off with some comments I had from the last video when I did some water tests. So a lot of people were saying, yeah, but what's in your tap water? You're saying you're nit there's no nitrate in there or your nitrates are different or your, your nitrates are different or whatever. But what about your tap water? So I've always been, I've always said, yeah, it's always a good idea to test your tap water. So we're going to do that today. We're going to look at nitrites. We're going to look at ammonia. We're going to look at nitrate. And then we're going to look at the KH in my tap water. Let's go. So first of all, we're going to do the ones that take the time, which is nitrate and ammonia. Oh, and nitrate and nitrite. Nitrite. Ammonia. Now, when I did my nitrate, somebody commented and said, You're supposed to shake it a lot longer than that, Andy. Thing is, how I edit these things, I try to make it so you don't fall asleep while I'm stood here shaking one of these things. So I'll talk to you while I'm doing it. So you see that I do shake it a lot. This is for you. I'm doing this. Everybody else just go make a brew or something. <laughs> no, ready off. Nitrate. Now I always do my KH in a separate bottle from the one that they give me with the KH. And the reason I do that is, is I found that the five milliliters on here isn't right. It's, it's in fact, it's, it's, it's wrong. <laughs> it is wrong, basically. So I always measure it in something else with a syringe, which says five, and this says five, and then I put it into the jar. I don't know, check it out yourself. If you've got, if you've got one of these, check it out, because mine was wrong. So, KH. Seven, which is interesting because as soon as my KH drops, I have options to increase the KH in my pond. I can either one, uh, just increase and do a massive water change and it increases the KH then, which slowly runs out as, as the water parameters change. If I, if I put a bucket of my tap water, if I put some tap water in one of my buckets and left it 24 hours and put it back, the KH would be lower. So it just gives it a, a quick boost because it's seven but mine's usually between four and six. So seven's going in is good because it drops off and it lands more like five, four or five, which is good. The only other option I've got is to put bicarbonate of soda in, into the, into the pond and that will increase the KH, but it cost me that. So I might as well, I'm paying for the water anyway. So I might as well put the water in as well as going out and buying bottles of, uh, or tubs or whatever of bicarbonate of soda. So I've got two options basically. So the pH, nice and stable, pH is the same in my tap water as it is in my pond, which is good, so pH, let's just scrap that to one side. And then these, we just have to wait. I'll go back to this again. Ping. Five minutes is up. Let's have a look at the results. Okay, the first one we did, nitrite. No, no nitrite in my, in my tap water. It's exactly the same color as it went in. Ammonia, again, it's tap water. It's not gonna be that in there. Nitrate, no, same again. Same color as it went in. So really my tap water, there's nothing apart from KH, which increases my KH when I, when I put it in, because the KH is, is at, what did I say, seven or eight? It's quite high anyway, uh, because my KH is usually between four and six, but last time I did it, it was, was it three? So just looking at the pond, what I'm finding is that the clarity of my water has dropped off drastically. Um, and again, this was since I was using the static bed because I used that for a number of weeks and I've only recently turned it back on again. 
So I'm wondering if a lot of finds have been have, got, have now gone through out of the now moving bed, but I've been trying to catch them with the filter floss and with the uh, underlay stuff. So interesting. It just seems you've. I, I tell you what, I didn't do. I didn't turn the UV back on one day when I'd. Mind you, I'd only. It's only on for an afternoon. It could have been off for a few days actually. Anyway, so my water clarity's dropped off a lot for whatever reason. I think it was my fault leaving the UV off for a few days. Forget to turn it back on when I did a water change um, and a filter clean. So. Ghost koi are usually pretty pretty bulletproof, but I have a golden out for maybe 15 years, no, 14 years, 14, 15 years anyway, and I found he's got this little kink in his back, and I don't know why, and he's he's spending a lot of time on the bottom now, not coming up for food, which he usually does, he usually come up, as soon as he hears a tub rattle, he comes straight up, you know, and he's always the one pushing through and I'll get the food. Two or three days now, not done that. And I saw OJ, and smudge doing a bit of flashing around as well on the bottom but i have a funny feeling that's because of because of these extreme well not extreme because of the uh, differences in water temperature each day you know it's go it was we were talking just under 14 and then within 24 hours it was back up to 15 so you had a two degree jump there which i believe is never good for the fish so i'm going to spend the next couple of days just keeping an eye on things if it gets to the point where they're still flashing i might take one out and give it a bit of a scrape and see what's there because I was watching Andy from Derby Koi and he had some parasites and I was watching other YouTubers that were reporting also on parasites and every season I seem to get to the point I seem to get to the point at this time of year when you really don't want parasites because you don't want to go into the below 10 degrees and have a parasite in your pond because you can't treat it because most of your treatments are over 10 degrees. So at the moment I'm 15 and I'm kind of, keep my fingers crossed, it's not. But if it is, I want it now so I can deal with it now and go into winter pretty much, hopefully, parasite free. But you never know. So the UV's back on. I think, that was, I think the clarity was my fault with the UV. So the UV's back on. I'm gonna give it a few days and see what happens with that. I tell you what, for those who watch my videos a lot, you'll find, and, and you look at the comments below, because I tell you what, it's, this, this whole channel is made for you and me, because I do the tests, I try things, you see what the result is, decide whether you want to do it or not. If it fails, then obviously you don't do it. If it's a success, you decide whether you want to do it or not. And that's what I've kind of based this on. I, I want this channel to create as many comments as possible, because it allows us all to learn from other people's experiences and knowledge so that's that's dead interesting and that's one of the one of the parts that i find that doing this youtube channel is that the, the amount of different people's opinions that you the viewer can then look and say right okay i'll make my mind up do i try that do i buy that do i change how i do that to make it work the reason i'm doing what i'm doing is so that my opinion you can actually see it happening so you can see it happening you see it work you see it fail you see it success and that's what this whole channel is about. And it's from learning from you as well, because I make a number of my decisions on what you have said when you've commented and I've thought, now is that a goer? And I always have to calculate this, make a calculated decision on whether I try things that you out there as a viewer suggests. And I that's what I want. I want a lot of that. You know, comment when I say comment below, just fire away. It doesn't matter how big, stupid, great, fantastic, work doesn't work. It, all people's opinions are great because we all learn from that. Every day is a school day. <laughs> right, just getting some stuff up ready to get my covers ready for winter. So we're going to get them out. I've got, I've got a few ends to fix back on. Broke them off when I was putting them away. Again. No school day for me. I forget every year. Brother's coming in on his helicopter again. 20 minutes. So, uh, let's get some cover repairs. Fast forward. <sighs> well, we're done. All ready for winter. Right, covers are away. Now I'm feeling a little bit, after all that hard work, feeling a little bit peckish. No oat cakes today. We're going for a right pie. 
<laughs> Another delicacy of Stoke-on-Trent. These were created by John James Wright, 1926. Uh, basically it all started, he was an engineer mechanic. Uh, used to, his wife used to make him some meat and potato that she used to wrap in, some pastry to keep it fresh. He took it to work, he let a couple of lads try it at work, they loved it, he went back, she started making more, Wright's pies were created. And this is a Wright's pie. Look at that, meat and potato. They do steak, they do chicken and mushroom, really good, Wright's pies all over the place, based in crew at the moment. If you can't get old of an oatcake in Stoke, go find a Wright's pie shop. Beautiful. Excuse me. Mm. Right, it's been a few days now since I've done any filming. Um, just keeping keep an eye on things to be honest. So we've got some conclusions here anyway. So the first one was why was my pond so green? I had left the UV off for I think it must have been about four or five days and when it was it was quite sunny a week or two ago. Or was it whenever? Anyway, <laughs> as time goes by. Um, so yeah, it was quite sunny then. And I think what it was is I left the UV off for a little bit too long, forgot about it, saw the water, water turning green, wondered why, and then ping. So it's a UV. So how long does it take for your UV to clear the green water once you've left it off for a few days? Well, I found like nearly two weeks. However, I've got a 55 watt UV bulb on an almost 7,000 litre pond. So it's going to take a little while. That I means 55 watts, so it's, it's quite a big UV bulb. Uh, I did have another unit and I was going to put them side by side. So I've got two 55s, which would have been major overkill, uh, in my opinion. I don't know about yours, you know what to do. Uh, but uh, but I, I only bought it for spares because there's something broke on the one I've got in now, one of the little plugs on the end broke. So I bought a second one, I think it was only I think 25 quid second hand, and that was a 55 UV. And I took the plug off that, but I've got another one since, so I've kind of fixed that. So I thought, oh, I'll put two in line. So I've got 110 watt. I was like, no chance, mate. Look at the size, look at the price of of electric at the moment, so there's, that's not gonna happen. But, so yeah, it's taken a couple of weeks for the pond to kind of get somewhere close. Uh, and like I say, I've stopped, I've only got my filter floss in there now, doing bits and pieces. Next one is, is what's happening in the pond? I'm still not 100% sure what's happening in the pond. I've had old Goldie out um, to, not again, but when I first had him out, I took a scrape. And um, interesting. Nothing. <laughs> oh, to be honest, I was hoping to find something on there. Because if there's something on there, then I can understand why everybody's moping around a bit. Because gold is literally just sitting on the bottom. Just that, that little crook. Again, I'll show you this big picture again. So the little crook in his tail. That I'm not sure why that's arrived. But again, like the fish is, is maybe 17 years old now. Hates human beings with the passion, doesn't like other fish either. But he loves you if you've got a bit of uh, a muscle or a prawn in your hand. Oh, he's your best mate then. <laughs> so, so I don't know, I'm just kind of wondering what's going on. Even when I got him out to put him in the bowl, I had to let him sit there for, phew, it must have been a good f four or five minutes. Just don't touch him, just stand back. And he slowly calms down, what you doing getting me out of here, kind of stuff. Flicking his tail round and Bless him. But what can you do? You know, like I said, I've always said, I don't like taking the fish out unless I have to. And I made the executive decision. I need to take one out because. So pond covers, now they're fixed. They're sitting in the background on standby. Pond temperature has gone down since the last time I video, it's gone down to just over 14 degrees. So I'm now on a wheat germ mix. So I'm on a summer winter mix because if the temperatures are going to start dropping down, look at the long term forecast at the moment in October 2023, so I don't know when you're watching this video, if it's a couple of years on, I don't know. But at the moment, in October 2023, the temperatures were, were kind of rising because we had that bit of a blast of air in the UK coming up from the continent that, that made it nice and warm for a few days, raised the pond temperatures a degree or so, and then it dropped back off again, so it's quite cold in the mornings again. So, 
pond covers are on standby. I'm kind of watching people's videos and hearing that others are putting them on. No, not yet. I want to keep mine off as long as possible because fish have started coming back to the window now. I think it's got to be changing temperature. It's got to be these sudden changes in temperature that are affecting the fish and they wanted to dive down a little bit thinking it's winter time. Comment below. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please uh, subscribe there. Subscribe, like, share, ding the bell for notification. Ding! And like, because that makes all the difference. That little thummy like, that makes all the difference to our videos. Thanks very much for watching. Cop on last time. Ooh, ooh.